Good morning. We'll wait a few moments before everyone comes on and we'll get started. Katie, should I wait for Liz to come on in or are you good to be able to rock and roll? From my side, I'm ready, but I think oh. the ritual is for Liz to start. So I'm happy. Bit. I'll give it until five after and then we'll start because uh, you are our topic today. So it should be fun. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. Sure. Hey, people. Just in time. I told everyone I was waiting until five after for you. Oh, no. Sorry. No, no, no. All is well. All is well. Welcome. Right. So am I the last to, to arrive, do you think? Uh, do you know what? You, you show up when you do. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a slow agenda today. Just some small things here. So we can go ahead and get started. Our normal antitrust policy All note. Right. Take it away, Liz. Yeah, welcome everyone. You've made it. Uh, do we have an agenda side? I'll let you tick us off as we get here. And yeah, exciting things to hear about the um, the end user tech radar, the latest edition. I think this is uh, episode two of the tech radar, right? So uh, I think Cheryl and Katie, are you presenting this to us today? It's all on Katie. I'm just here to sit and listen and answer any questions if they come up. Good luck, Katie. Oh, no pressure. <laughs> cool. Uh, Liz, I think the slides are going to be here. shared. Yeah, the slides are shared. Um, Liz, there's a note here for you around the LF diversity training. I did not build out slides for it because it's very tiny. Okay. 
Um, and other housekeeping notes are uh, we are doing a special edition of the TOC meeting on September 29th because that's where we have space for it. We would not normally have a fifth meeting of the TOC in, in a month, but we are here and we'll be talking about graduating requirements. So special meeting, usual time, usual place, but at a, a day that we would not normally have meetings. So. Katie, if you're ready, I'm happy to move to you. Yes, yeah, sounds good. I'm not sure if I should share my screen or you're just going to. Nope, I will take care slides. of it. Awesome. I will take care of it. Awesome. So um, my name is Katie Gumanji and I am one of the end user elected TOC. And today um, I am assigned to present to the new tech radar, which is going to be focused around observability. Now, before I move forward with the topic, I would like to introduce what exactly the tech radar is in, uh, as a term and why exactly it's such an important tool within the ecosystem at the moment. Now, a tech radar is an assertive guide or quite a pionate guide on the emerging tool within the ecosystem. It actually aims to provide this um, context of the tooling which are used currently by the end user company. So this is actually quite important. It's focused on the end users and what they utilize at the moment in their stacks. And the tech radar aims to showcase three main areas or three main levels of adoption or categories for every single tool. It's gonna to be adopt, adopt, trial, and assess. With the adopt level, there is a clear recommendation to use this technology in production. It actually showcased quite stable features and it provides a solution for the current um, problem or whatever they want to solve it's actually um, solved with this particular tool. In the trial level, there are usually the tools which are categorized as they actually aim to solve a part of the problem, but at the same time, um, there is some success with them. So keep an eye on them and make sure to adopt them or POC them if you would like to adopt anything else. And the assess is gonna focus on pretty much more of like emerging technologies. They uh, definitely will focus more on solving future problems into the technology. So there is definitely something to keep an eye on in the future. Now with the technology radar, there is a theme for every single one of them. And this particular one is gonna focus on observability. And observability actually is quite a, a core kind of functionality in every single company because we require that visibility, even like the company success can, is not able to be measured if you don't have a good observability stack. So it will um, mainly focus on functionality such as logs, metrics, and tracing. And currently the technology radar has been curated by a radar team, I think that's the name of it. Um, and the radar team is a selection of randomly uh, kind of pointed out users from the uh, end user community as well. And they will be able to make sure that they uh, kind of ingest all of the data and make sure that the final radar is something which really showcases what the community uses at the moment. And in this particular trial, this is uh, the first radar team uh, as far as I'm aware. And uh, they have a very wide representations from different companies such as Zendesk, Fox, The New York Times, and Hayd. And with their help, we were able to create a final reader as mentioned, and they were the one to identify some of the main things or some of the main kind of takeaways from um, the current um, exercise as well. In terms of how we survey the companies, uh, this is gonna be based on a Google spreadsheet. So that's gonna be the next slide. Yeah, uh, they'll be able, currently we don't have an exhaustive list of all of the, the tooling. The companies will, or the voters, they will be able to add new tooling or new instrumentation mechanisms um, based on what they actually use in their stack at the moment. And they'll be able to as well categorize those tools with the levels we've mentioned before, adopt trial and assess. And there's actually a hold vote as well, which means that the company don't really recommend that tool to be used in the future. Um, the tech writer actually aims to showcase uh, a good example of what's usable now rather than what should not be used. So only the free levels are presented at the moment. And with this observability tech radar, there were more than almost 300 data points. If that's gonna be the next slide. 
uh, so 283 votes and these are coming from 32 companies and you can see some of the companies showcased uh, or the logos showcased over here when you look into the number of employees for every single company there is a slight tilt towards the companies which have more than 1000 um, employees however there is a very fair and good representation for small and medium companies as well and when you look in the breakdown by industry of the voters um, some of them are going to, well, most of them are categorized as software, which is quite a wide term. Um, but if you look at the table as well, there's a wide representation of other industries as well. And as mentioned, um, the tech radar itself is not exhaustive. It's just um, based on the current data points, what exactly the end users are uh, using in their production systems. So if you go to the next slide, this is a final representation of the tech radar. And we can see that in adopt we have in trial, we have quite uh, a kind of chunky list and it says consists of three elements. I'm gonna go through all of these levels and just point a few takeaways about every single one of them. So the first one is gonna be adopt and that's gonna be the next slide as well. In the adopt, we have tools such as Prometheus, Grafana, Elastic Datadog and Open Metrics. And if you look at the amount of votes, Proportionally, most of them, most of the companies, they're opting to, this is a good tool to use in production based uh, compared to other votes as well. Now, if you look into all of this tooling, they are tools that have been in the industry for quite a couple of years now, and they're actually quite stable. They've been used in production and they have a very good way to solve the current problems in the industry. The trial uh, level, is going to be composed, it's going to be the next slide, it's going to be composed of tools such as Jaeger, Splunk, Lightstep, StatsD, CloudWatch, and Sentry. Now, these tools have a very good uh, kind of um, amount of votes across different levels as well. So that's why I think the, uh, the radar team, they opted to put them in the trial category. But if you look into the distribution of this tooling, some of them have been around for quite a long time. Some of them are actually quite emerging. But what we can see is like they really focus on specifying those um, maybe subset of, of problems. For example, Jaeger is gonna be specifically focused on the tracing. Um, while CloudWatch is more of like a SaaS solution from um, AWS, which comes out of the box pretty much. And when you look into the SS, that's gonna be composed of three uh, tools, OpenTelemetry, Thanos, and Kiali. Now, this was uh, one of the most interesting, personally for me, areas, because most of these tools, they have been around quite recently. Um, and I think there is a wide awareness of these tools. The companies have been widely POCing them and trying them within their stack. However, they didn't move completely to a potential production environment yet. So this is something definitely to keep an eye on, which again, for example, with Thanos, they have potentials to solve um, like logs injection at scale. So something to, again, to keep an eye on in the future. And if you move to the next slide, the radar team as well, identify some of the main themes to uh, um, which kind of out were, were outlined from this radar. And the first one is that the most commonly adopted tools are open source. Now, if you look into all of those tooling, which we have on the radar at the moment, um, most of them are gonna be open source and some of them are gonna have a SaaS provider uh, actually coming with that extra su like enterprise support if need be, or the support team itself. Um, with the this particular um, theme as well, there was this balance, well, a balance could be seen between actually running the product in-house and actually, uh, or vice versa, making sure that a SaaS provider will provision those capabilities. So there is a very fine balance between in-house build or in-house maintenance of the open source tools or paying for them. The second theme is gonna be focused about on the, that's gonna be the next slide. Yeah, there's gonna be no consolidation in the observability space. Now, based on the votes currently, um, or for this tech radar, most of the companies are gonna use between five and 10 different tooling within their observability stack. And what it actually means is that 
when we talk about Kubernetes, we say that there is not one platform which is the same. And I think this is applied for the observability stack as well. There is not one observability stack which is going to incorporate the same tooling or provisioning the same solutions or same functionalities. And that's why we see that companies actually opt to use different tools. Now, as mentioned, when you talk about observability, there's going to be metrics, there's going to be logs and tracing. And usually they're going to use different tools to either get a subset of those functionalities or just focus on a functionality straight away. Um, maybe another thing to mention here, I have my notes. <laughs> Yes, another thing which was actually outlined here is that it's easy to adopt new tools rather, to, than, rather than migrate to new tooling. Now, observability is something which everyone wants within their stack. However, at the same time, um, if you incorporate a new feature, if you have a new tool that will come with a new observability endpoint potentially. So there's kind of this expansion growth of the tooling within a company. That's why we don't have consolidation. But at the same time, it's difficult to fully migrate to a different system as well. So that's why we have like different components and different tooling taking care of different functionalities. And the last thing which was identified is that Prometheus and Grafana are fre frequently used together. This is um, something which is interesting. It's kind of a natural outcome nowadays. If you run Prometheus, there is going to be a Grafana and vice versa. Um, actually, the Prometheus team, they deprecated the prom dash in four years ago or so. Uh, in favor for a Grafana dashboard. So there is a clear association between um, how the log should be ingested with Prometheus and a potential visualizer with Grafana as well. And um, as well, the community quite heavily focused on provisioning the documentation and different um, kind of examples, which are focused on deploying Prometheus and Grafana side by side. And these are pretty much uh, kind of the main themes which were outlined all together. And overall, we can see that the tech radar for observability, if we go to the next slide, so uh, the tech radar for observability has um, kind of different level of adoptions as expected. We can see that some of the tooling which are very stable, they are very widely used and quite commonly used in the big companies and these are outlined by adoption. The trial itself, I think there is an, an area which is a good step for well matured um, new projects and projects which have been around for quite a while, but they've been able to transform and keep up to date with um, some of the new uh, kind of principles and trends within the technology. So that's kind of an area for kind of side by side new and emerging technology. While in assess we have um, Again, new standards, new new way of observability. So something which definitely will solve the future problems when we're talking about scale and enterprise. And if we go to the next slide, yes, there is a new initiative actually. There is a new endpoint to see all of these um, tech radars. That's gonna be on radar.cncf.io. That will contain, of course, the um, um, the diagram itself with the main takeaways and um, some of the reasoning behind that, including the tech radar team. And currently, um, there is uh, this tech radar is going to be deployed or put together every single quarter. So if you'd like to vote on the next theme, please do so. And that's going to be on the next slide as well. Um, so currently, uh, the votes are on a GitHub issue. So please be aware of that. If you'd like to choose any particular theme, please vote. And if you'd like to actual vote for some of the technologies in this um, ecosystem, uh, please join the end user community. Uh, only the end user users are able to input all of these data points. It's very end user driven rather than vendor driven. So that's gonna be the next slide as well. And the last slide is if there are any feedback you would like to improve or um, add new additional features to the decorator or any new information you'd like to get from these data points, please send the feedback uh, on that email as well. And I've been seeing that there's a lot of chat going on over here. So if there are any questions, please shut them out. We'll try to cover them as 
as we can. Any burning questions or anything like that? <laughs> There's some good commentary going on in the uh, the chat. Um, yeah, I think a, a few people saying the sample size is still relatively small. So 32 responses, was it? So, it's 32 uh, companies, but we have, they actually had 300, almost 300 data points. So based on their usage. Now I've seen Cortex mentioned here, here and there. I was actually surprised as well that Cortex is not on the radar, um, especially when we're looking at the adoption uh, companies for Cortex. There are quite a few companies and we'd be using Cortex quite heavily as well in production. Um, I think this is like going back to, we need uh, more users to actually have their input. And this is something which I think uh, the CNCF is working on. Um, but it's all about like, it's not like Cortex is not used, it's just like, it's not represented well enough on the radar. And as well, um, there are more than 30 tools, I think, voted on in the overall in the spreadsheets, but there is a kind of a choice to have a limited amount of tooling on the radar, not to make it too overwhelming overall. So just to be aware of that as well. Yeah, it's great stuff. I mean, it's another useful end user tech radar. So thank you very much, everyone. Well, Katie, Cheryl, and everyone who participated in it and the, the leads on that survey. Really great. Uh, looks like a few questions coming up in the chat. What if your company's not an, officially an, a CNCF end user but would like to provide input anyways? Ooh, I think Cheryl can take this one. Yeah, Cheryl, do you want to take yeah. that one? Mm -hmm. um, so if the question is if there's a if it, your company is a vendor company versus an end user company. So if it's an end user company, then basically the way to contribute is to join the end user community. Uh, we don't make it a hundred percent open because the, a lot of the companies in the end user community cannot state publicly what they're using. Like their legal and PR teams will completely block that. So we have to have a private forum where these things are discussed. Um, if you come from a vendor company, then the way to contribute to this is to ask your end users to join and to vote on the things that they're using. It's not, it's not a like, you know, get your end users to join and then you will definitely end up on the radar, but it's also a great way for them to get involved with the community and get engaged with open source. So it's a good way to do it. Uh, yes, we're working next time. We're going to try and get the topic a little bit earlier, probably in about a month's time. Um, Lee, yes, the point about feedback being funneled to the SIGs. So I had a chat with Rishi, who is the chair of the SIG observability um, group. And he, I don't think he is here today. Is he? Yeah, I, I think he had a clash today. today. Oh, yeah. um, oh, you're here. Okay, awesome. I think you should weigh in then since we had a chat about how, what SIG observability can do with this information. So with both the, um, with both my uh, Prometheus and my SIG observability head on, I would like to enable end users to onboard themselves onto the more modern solutions uh, amongst the survey. Of course, um, there was at least one surprise uh, in that list, at least to me. Um, and basically what Cheryl and me talked about is to, to create a kind of short questionnaire of actually actionable things, which we as a community of maintainers and six can provide to end users, what are their main, main pain points? Like it could be applied prompt here. It could be how to migrate from steps D to Prometheus. It could be whatever, like come up with a few of those questions, send them to the end user community and have the end user community choose what type of content gives them the most value to, to use modern technology, basically. Um, 
And if anyone has any suggestions, um, we have the um, SIG observability call right after the TOC meeting, and you're more than welcome to join, or um, you can send email to me, or you can poke the Prometheus team, all of those work. Thank you, yeah, it's definitely one of my goals to get this kind of feedback going to, to the SIGs and to the project maintainers ultimately, and to try and develop this as a feedback loop. Um, what else can I address? Put, look, put Lockie on there, lol. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I think we, don't think we want to just randomly add projects. I mean, the way to add projects really is to have end users who are using it. Um, Lee, I'd love to hear more about this comment. The radar is helpful, but too well distilled. Like, what else would you like to see? Well, uh, good question. Let me let me brainstorm out loud for a moment and say uh, that it might be that if there are like specifically painful either features that are missing or bugs that have been you know, uh, in specific projects that have been hard to, uh, for users to overcome. And that's in part why a specific project is still out on the periphery. Like just some of those, some of those details, like you can't put all those details into the, you can't digest all those in a, in a picture. And so I think that that's kind of an example of like, if, if there are specific PRs or, or issues or, or maybe those things haven't been documented that, um, uh, like you said, ultimately getting that that back to the project maintainers is kind of the goal. The uh, SIGs can can potentially help in, in that regard. Let me brainstorm on a different uh, perspective, and that is that like um, in SIG Network, there's we've formed a service mesh working group. Um, part of the goals of that group is to um, put forth common patterns of use and can curate you know, curate those patterns as uh, things that end users conceptually could, could either learn from or inform. And, and we don't, uh, we're not connected in that way today. We don't have a, or I don't know that we have a, a like, or at least facilitated through the CNCF. I don't know that we have a vehicle for um, sort of exchanging those in advance of publishing them. I think that's and a separate question to the tech radar, but maybe working with Cheryl, you could figure out how to have that feedback loop for that particular white paper or, or whatever format it is you're, you're going to create that in. Nice. Yeah, I, I really do want to encourage this loop. As you said, Lee, that it's too, right now it's too separated, these two groups. Yeah. So it is, this is like, Tech radar is one of my first initiatives towards bridging this this gap. No, this is great. Um, this, is, this is nice. I'll also just, um, interrupt to say that well, it's it's like absolutely necessary for a couple of reasons that they there is a divider that like not all of that is open. You you'd articulated one of those, and another one that I would say is just that having been on both sides of that line that like with my end user hat on, I would say like, we don't, we don't want those thinking vendors here kind of getting in that, like we want to have an open conversation and an honest one about what's going on without influence per se. And so, yeah, so it's a health, it's a healthy thing. I think, thanks for what you guys are doing. It's, it's good. Absolutely. I'm, I'm glad that you, uh, you find it helpful. Um, I did have one comment about um, coming up with the list of PRs or issues or pain points, because Rich and I spoke about this yesterday as well. Um, I think it's very hard for a group of people to just collectively come up with, you know, here's our top three pain points. You know, if it was that easy, then they would just go to file an issue or vote up on an issue. So the uh, I think some of these also are not things that are well encapsulated as issues. Uh, for example, one of the companies who responded, who a lot of these companies use many, many tools, right? Um, as Katie was saying, there's no consolidation. And one of the reasons is because in some 
for in many companies, observability is not a core business function or business value to them. And therefore investing the time to move away from an existing observability solution to a new one is a very hard sell, you know? And that sort of thing is not a fault of the project. It's not an issue that can be resolved. Um, it's just how the observability space works. And I think that's different from, for example, the first radar in CICD, where there's a benefit to having everybody on one solution or having everybody on, you know, all your developers using the same CD solution compared to observability, where, where there's benefit to having a few different ones because maybe there's different strengths or different approaches in different tools. Anyway, not an easy, not an easy, uh, I would love to get to the point where I could say like, okay, here's five pain points, like done, go away and, and then we're done. But I'm not sure how easy or if it's possible to get to that point. So, so this is Steve, I, rather than jumping in the chat room, right? Um, I what is, hi. So, so what you articulated is, is true, and I suspect it's uh, the, the difficulty is not just associated with observability. I think it's, uh, so I come from years of, of uh, you know, commercial software background and open source. Um, you know, when you've got an install base, you know, adopting a new technology is going to be a challenge and uncomfortable, right? So I think it would still be helpful since this is, um, you know, a technology radar. If there are business conditions that, that influence their assessment, somehow capturing that so that we're not trying to solve technology problems, but, you know, get an understanding of kind of the you know, the real life business impacts that, that also apply. Yeah, no, Steve, that is a, that's a great point. And one that I think this is where the, the SIGs and the project maintainers should work directly with end users to figure out these points. I don't think I think it's very hard for people to just spontaneously say, here are the reasons why, why we're not moving to this technology or what our pain points are here. But I think in a discussion, these are the sort of things that come out. So I guess my answer to you is just to say, I'm going to try and push project maintainers and end users together more, get them to talk more and hope this comes out. Fair enough. I hope that makes sense. If there's a better way to, uh, uh, think about this and I'm all, all for trying new ideas as well. Yeah, a, a comment here from a, an end user. I obviously represent a, a really big company, which is not always the norm, but um, you know, distilling down what's the business use case. I mean, we have so many different lines of business and internal groups and there's so much uh, different uses of technology depending on sort of where, where it's at. So it's not possible to just distill this down to here's the business use case for this thing. So I, I'm with Cheryl, you know, more, more real engagement with end users um, throughout the process and the lifetime of the projects versus trying to, you know, pull snippets off, off radars. The radar is great, but it's not going to, it's not going to help projects, you know, align what they're doing to, to real users without that sort of engagement. Yeah. It's certainly precipitated the conversation here, right? And this, this would be what you would hope just that interaction would uh, produce. Uh, I, I think the point toward this business case here is also that, that it's, uh, as people mentioned, it's a technology radar, and I think that's where some people are headed, not just a, a project radar. And I know that you have done more than this, but it could feel a bit like this because you're focusing not on the projects, but because of what people are adopting, what they are struggling with, it could still be helpful questions. I mean, it's not surprising that there is obviously bigger adoption in the metric space than there is in the distributed tracing space on the open source side, simply due to the maturity of, um, of some of those projects and how long they have been around. And I think this can also be guidance to people really picking and choosing technologies eventually. So I think what I kind of read between the lines, it's, it's great that you have product adoption in there, that it's an honest feedback from end user that's all amazing, but should we also focus on guidance, why certain technologies are, where they are, why end users see them, where they are. 
um, say if a user says, well, we are very good at metrics, but we and locks obviously, but we're just moving into tracing, or we have certain use cases where actually we just get enough out of these technologies or using certain technologies only in certain areas. I think that that would be helpful also for other end users to, to choose why people are doing it. And also for say that the wider community understand where you are, where you are on the technology side of all of these, these topics, if that makes sense. Can I answer? Lee makes a sure. point in chat about um, capturing comments during the assessment. Is, is there any kind of capturing of ad hoc commentary during this process? We do capture ad hoc commentary, but again, it's difficult to publicly, it's difficult to publish this completely publicly. Um, maybe it's okay in an anonymized format, but then maybe some of the comments would reveal too much about the companies. I mean, we've been a bit conservative so far on, on what we're publishing, but it would be useful information for sure. Um, and I wanted to add in also uh, a link to the webinar that we did with the radar team on this observ observability radar, because we discuss in this webinar some of the questions that you had about um, why end users chose one solution over another, or what were the what were the factors that were actually important to them when picking observability and observability solution? So I recommend that you go and watch the the full webinar as well. I suppose as we do these, we need to be uh, at least conscious of the fact that not all solutions in a space are kind of necessary. I think, um, you know, if you have a big thing like observability, maybe everybody is doing metrics, but not, you know, some percentage of people are doing tracing. Do we take into account that, you know, I'm going to make up some numbers, maybe of those 32 companies, 10 of them just have no need for distributed tracing. And so they didn't put any answers in. Does that kind of penalize, you know, it, it, we wouldn't want those projects to look like they're less successful just because they have a less broad usage. Does that make sense or do you? So would it mean? So um, the, the definitions are very specific for this reason. Um, putting something in assess or in, in trial does not mean this is a bad solution. It just means there was not broad enough consensus to say positively that everybody who uses cloud native should adopt this thing. But it is, it is a very hard line to it's a very so subtle distinction. Yeah, I can imagine sort of finer granularity radars coming up with a different answer. You know, if you had a, a radar that focused just on logging, would that maybe move things? I don't know, do you think? Yeah, I mean, we could add more, more levels if that would be helpful. And I saw Matt, you raised your hand. Yeah, and, and I think a good point was brought up that not every CNCF project is uh, everybody use it kind of thing. Um, some are gonna be for specific use cases. So there isn't just the, the column of should everybody use it? Because then you'd never have specialized tooling, which of course you need, right? If you're gonna scale really big, you're gonna be different than somebody, you know, and really broad and have many clusters, you're gonna have somebody different than who's got a small setup, right? And so there, there are other angles, other verticals to look at as well, including should everybody adopt it as far as if you're measuring success. And I think that would maybe be useful to put into context and to take into account. We shouldn't measure everybody by the same stick if it's not appropriate.
Yeah, I, I, I feel completely like... agree with what Matt said there. I think it's it doesn't have to change what we're doing with the the technology radar. It's more about that kind of colour that we might apply to whether or not a particular tool is, you know, the sort of thing that everybody would have or the sort of thing that some specialised niche, niche application would need. Uh, I feel like Katie or Lena or maybe Michael want to weigh in as well because this radar has two audiences right one is the projects but also one is the end users yeah um i, I have a comment so like uh, uh, i like the i like the uh, uh the current radar because i think i think it's it's uh it's about the projects and it's about the technology adoption as well so like i'll look at it if i see that if i see the tracing um in the ss and trial and not in the adopt it's just to me it's like it's it's not as adopted as a, as a monitoring so i think Having a generic radar is is good. Having a more specialized radar uh, can be good too. It's just a slightly different different angle of looking at things. I think from my perspective as well, I was compared to the first radar. If you're looking into the adopt section in the CICD, we had maybe three tools, while in here we actually have five and there was a potential to have even more tools in the adoption and it actually showcased i was surprised slightly disagreeing but then i realized every single company that i've been interacting with they actually use like more than four or five tools for their observability and it's absolutely fine and um i think this was like one of my main surprises about the current shape of the radar especially as well if you go to the next level there is plenty of tools again there is not one way to actually or one golden path to make sure that all your components are going to be very well measured within infrastructure with this like free tools everything is going to be fine there is a subset of different things that you need to use um, so i still think it's a realistic example but like putting my like community hat on, I still would love to see more of like the open source tools there, like a bit more representation. But yeah, I think I'm actually curious if we do the same survey, maybe in a year, like I would be, I would, I would be very pleased if that would happen, if some of the tools from the trial would actually move all the way down to like a more centered, like towards the center of the radar, which will actually showcase a real increase in the usage of that tool in the end user community. So yeah, I think maybe we kind of redoing the same, uh, the same exercise on the same theme at some point in the future and kind of differentiate them. Yeah, I think that that's a great idea to, see, to also see how certain areas develop over time because there will be development, especially if you're in a not so much consolidated space. Um, that would definitely be helpful, I think. And also that the more people know about it, the more people will, will contribute to it. Any more questions or thoughts on this? Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to share some, sorry, I just wanted to share okay. some very positive feedback. Uh, like there was this long discussion on Twitter. I think that every one of us really read about like the landscape being a, a nightmare. And I think this is a very good answer to, to this. Like there, there's the technology radar. This is where you see adoption is not just the landscape. You see more end user focused data on how people are using certain projects and so forth. So I think that's definitely a move in the right direction. And I really like the direction that it's going. So take this as like um as we used to say in german like critique at a very high level i think it's, it's, it's amazing that we, we are moving in this is, is space and i think it answers a a concern it was raised on, on on twitter and other channels about the landscape and uh, i think that's it that, that's a good that's a good direction that this is going so i really like this to to add to this point, I think it as an input, it's super valuable, but not as two distinct things. Again, the, the landscape as it is, at least to me, and I, I know we had this, this conversation within the SIG uh, talk uh, call before, uh, needs 
the ability to be sliced and diced as to the user's needs, as to what they care about at the moment and what they need to see at the moment. So if we were to, for example, attach this information from the survey to the landscape and allow people to sort stuff by different label sets, like for example, in what category in the end user survey is this and also give me everything which is graduated and then just list everything out which which like is has those two properties or whatever that would allow users to actually answer those questions for themselves as opposed to having two completely distinct overviews of basically the same thing but no way to to compile uh, to combine the data as they currently need it So I, I did think about how to, um, whether these two things should be compiled together. And I think the big difference is that the tech radar is a snapshot in time. So if we did this radar one year ago or a year from now, it would look different. So I feel a bit hesitant to say, to put it on the landscape, which is supposed to just be a, you know, present day overview and say, this thing is in adopt or this thing in trial if it comes from an old radar this is more a question then about what is the current data and do we have good data or is data becoming too old and does it need to be refreshed that's not a function of the landscape it's just a function of the age of the data Uh, additional piece of feedback. Uh, first, I, I I think it's a great body of work that's been done, and it's uh, it's super great to see. Um, I think in future iterations, I, I don't know if it's the right forum, but it would be interesting to see if if it were possible to survey what drives people's decisions. Certainly, in our company, and and in talking to some um, colleagues and other 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 folks uh, across the spectrum, um, you know, obviously there's there's competing interests when it comes to the selection of particularly observability tools um, and, and many people have m many in parallel, as you said, but you know that there's a, a lot of um, ambiguity, it seems at least as, as, as I've heard people uh, uh, say around what's the total cost of deploying an, a, an open source or a CNCF based solution versus a more commercial offering um, and how do decision makers grapple with those choices like what what drives them are they are they constrained by engineering capacity or are they willing to spend more to have a, a, a smoother lower friction uh, implementation um, and and how do they make those trade-offs um, yeah, I think it'd be interesting to understand what what drives those decisions um, if it were possible to capture yeah I think that's that's a really good point I mean every company organization has their own priorities and different projects, different resources, different amount of engineers. So it would be interesting to see, you know, like a trend, uh, you know, whether companies are actually, you know, thinking more about open source lines or they're thinking more about vendor, you know. Um, yeah. It, it it might be nice to be able to provide that not not only to the end user community of decision makers but back to projects as well to help them prioritize you know how much time do they spend on documentation on quick starts on um you know on material for people new to the project to either use as a as a consumer or to engage as a contributor um you know yeah well, um, to touch I, I on would, mentioning the landscape, I'd love to hear Cheryl's view on uh, what end users think of the landscape. I mean, I think we've all seen the, the size of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, before I talk about that, uh, Matt, let me just say about the, the reasons why end users pick different solutions. I would love, love, love to have this information. Um, it's really hard to get this information. Like, especially if you want people do like a five minute survey where they might not spend half an hour writing down, going back through emails and writing down all the reasons they chose one solution over another. So I will, I will aspire to get to that point, but it's another level of difficulty. 
Yeah, that might be some, that, that might be a, a place where the SIG observability could help. I mean, part of our, our mission and, and we're just getting getting rolling um, after after launching the SIG uh, earlier this year uh, is to curate, you know, case studies and patterns and, 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 and try to, you know, facilitate gathering that 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 data and and reporting back to the toc uh so i think mm -hmm. it will take some time and um but but that's love to work with you yeah on it um view on the landscape um again okay maybe i'll ask katie and elena and michael or anyone else to answer first before i give my my view Like, do you use the landscape? Do you find it valuable? Oh, the the really big landscape. Um, no, uh, no, we we don't. Well, we use the landscape occasionally. To uh, I think the card mode is actually not bad, and if you actually go into some of the you know categorized by by the actual grouping, you can get like a meaningful sort of list of sort of the, the things in that space. In terms of the larger landscape, I mean, certainly, again, we're, we're probably a more sophisticated sort of IT buyer, um, just based on how big we are and what have you. But you know, we, we generally don't rely on landscapes to drive sort of what we're adopting. So there's a much more rigorous, you know, assessment of what we need and and what's out there and, and what sort of makes sense and existing vendors and these sort of things. So we don't, we don't uh, rely on things like landscapes or, or really even research like stuff from even large research shops doesn't make the cut because it's typically lagging a long way behind and sort of at a, a different type of customer. So um, it's occasionally helpful to help people get sense of a space if, if you can break it down by the actual category but the thing on its entirety is, is obviously way too big. And I think that this is going to be a really interesting friction point, right? So we've got the, the radar, which is coming from an end user point of view, and we've seen what happened to the landscape. It's just a land grab. It's like, you know, it's just everyone's trying to tick the box to get their logo on, on the landscape. And so <laughs> there's, uh, the vendors want the, everything to move towards the landscape and the end users want more about what the radar is. So it's going to be an interesting uh, uh, friction here, I think. Yeah, I can. I'll just weigh in from from the MasterCard side of things. We're very similar to to Michael, right? That we, um, you know, we're we're solving you know financial and security issues all the time. So we look at the landscape to kind of give us an idea of where problem space could be helped for us to solve. And so it's been very useful to our teams in that they look at it when there's a problem they're trying to solve and we don't have a current solution for it. We look at what's available in the open source community because we're trying to be much more open source focused these days. And so um, that's where it comes into play for us extensively. But it's not, it's not just because it's fun, right? We have a business we're trying to conduct. So we, we have to have a reason to use it. We don't just use it because it's there. Okay, Michael, Ken, thank you. Um, I'm glad that you put your viewpoint in first. That also lines up with what I've seen from end users. Um, it's there, they'll look at it on occasion as a reference point, but they're not going to use it. There will always be a second level of evaluation within their own environment. So it's not something they rely on to just say, use this or use that. I think the uh, the landscape discussion will uh, will probably run and run, but since we've touched on it, it was interesting to uh, to to mention it. I think we have well, we have six minutes left, and I would quickly like to go on to the second item on the agenda, which is hopefully pretty quick. Uh, so, does anyone have any last comments on the technology radar before we move on? Wonderful work. Thank you very much, Katie, Cheryl, everyone else involved. Thank you as well. Right. Really great discussion. So the, um, the other thing that we had on the agenda, the uh, Kubernetes SIG chairs and leads are now required to take the, um, uh, I think it's called inclusive speaker training in terms of 
making sure they have awareness of diversity inclusion issues and uh the the question was raised it was raised such a long time ago i can't remember where it came from whether or not we should also make the same requirement extended to cncf sig chairs toc project maintainers you know what what group of people we might uh, we might want to extend that to um assuming that the the kubernetes sig chairs and leads are finding it useful any thoughts i see a plus one from ricardo hey um uh, hey liz uh it's Michelle here. I, um, I had suggested to the Kubernetes Steering Committee during my time there that we take this course. Um, I think Chris had suggested that we do this inclusive um, speaker training and it was more of a, like a top-down effort to like lead by example and make sure, you know, like the, the governance body uh, is doing all the right things to be inclusive. So kind of started with steering first and then uh, the SIG chairs um, later, it came later. I think uh, if we go forward with this, it'd be really great for the TOC to take it first and just kind of see how it is, feel it out, and then suggest it to the rest of the organization as well. I don't see any problem with all of us taking it though. On mute. Chris has just made the point that we're, the course is being up updated which actually yeah. i think is, I, i've been through the course and I, I think an update might be a sensible thing <laughs> it's being expanded too to make it more than just focused on speakers at a conference it's around open source community participation and so on but in its current form it's still very uh useful in my perspective that is great news uh so shall we uh i don't know have a I'm just going to assume we're core it today. Looks like lots of TSC people here. Should we just do a quick vote? We can do votes in the chat whether we want to make it compulsory for TSC to start and then having, once we've taken it, we can uh, hold a view whether or not we want to uh, require it of everybody else. Any, whatever group that everybody else is. Okay, so Michelle's voted. A few other votes. Oh, lots of votes coming in. Wonderful. Okay, TSC folks, I mean, I haven't counted, but I, it looks like that's, that's going through. So uh, if you haven't already done it, uh, Chris has provided the link to that course, which is free. So go take it at your leisure and then we can uh, talk about which groups we want to extend it to. Obviously everybody else is also encouraged to take that course as well. All right, I think we are at the top of the hour. We're at seven, great. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.